Omayanat Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshon Militanjena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha. So we're continuing with our weekly reading discussion of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, and it's such a joy to be here with this beautiful international group of inspired souls. <laughs> ready to have the nectar Bhagavad Gita poured over our heads. <laughs> so, beginning chapter 11, much anticipated moments. Chapter 11, Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga, the vision of the universal form. And we have Jayadev available, it looks like. Jayadev, you want to chant um, the, should we say like the first 10 verses? Okay. It's funny because it's actually like one of my least favorite chapters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like um, universal form Krishna. I like four-armed Krishna and two-armed you're, Krishna. You're a hardcore bhakta. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chintamani knows because we listened to uh, Srila Madhusudana Maharaja's reading and also uh, another reading from ISKCON. And mm -hmm. it kept landing on that. And I kept being bothered by the fact, you know, we'd wake up, we would do it while we sleep, we'd wake up and it'd be like, not the universal form again. God, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Krishna, I mean, if, if I had to choose a least favorite, if it's allowed to choose a least favorite chapter, I'd probably <laughs> make the same choice. <laughs> Even Arjuna at the end, Arjuna's like, please, Krishna, no, I want to go back to the other form. <laughs> <laughs> chapter 11 oh are we on chapter 10 no Chantamani we're saying ch oh Chantamani just said in the text chapter oh she made a mistake yeah. you're trying right. to get out of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> let me apply the uh, un ungulant of glasses to my eyes so I can read better <laughs> okay Arjuna Uvacha Madanu grahaya paramam guhyam adhyatma sagnyatam yat tvayuktam vachastena mohahyam vigato mama bhavapyayo hi bhutanam shruta vistarasho maya tattva kamala patraksha mahatmyam api chavyayam Evam meta yatatta yatatta tvam atmanam parameshvara drashtum itchami te rupam vaishvaryam purushottama manyaseya di tach chakyam ups chakyam maya drashtum iti prabho yogeshvara tato metum darshayatmam darshayatmanam adhyayam Shri Bhagavan Vacha Vashyame Parta Rupani Shata Shota Sahasrashaha Nana Vidhani Divyani Nana Varna Kratanicha Pushyadityan Vasun Rudran Ashvina Marutastata Bahun Yadrashata Puravani Push Pushya charai chariyani bharata e hai custom jagat kritsnam Pushyadya suchara charam Mamadehe gudakesha Yachanya drashtumit chasi Natumam shakyase drashtum Aninivas vachakrusha Divyam the damite chakshu Pashya me yoga me shwaram. Oh, go to all the way. Okay. Sanjaya uvacha eva muktva tato rajan maha yogeshwaro harihi. Dreshayam masa parataya paramam rupa me shwaram. Aneka vaktara nayanam. Aneka dhuta darshanam. Aneka divya bharanam divya ne kode de ta yudham. That's ten. 
you know, um, 10 and 11 are actually translated together. Why don't you just go to okay. 12? Go to 12. How is the feeling now? Okay. Give you Malayam Baradharam. Give you Gandhanu Lepanam. Saravascharyam Mayam Devam. Anantam Vishvato Mukham. Divi Surya Sahasrasya Bhaved Yuga Padutita Yadi Bha Sadrishi Sasyad Pasas Tasya Mahatmanaha. You want to read those translations for real? Oh, right, the English. <laughs> Sorry. Arjuna said, by your grace, you have revealed your hidden treasure to me, and my ignorance of your supreme self has been dispelled. O oh, beautiful lotus-eyed Lord, I have heard your elaborate description of the manifestation and the dissolution of the living beings. I have also heard your description of your inexhaustible glories. O oh, Lord, you have perfectly described your supreme self. Yet, O oh, Purushottama, I wish to see this glorious form of yours. O oh, Yogeshwara, I implore thee, if you consider it possible for me to see it, please reveal your imperishable form to me. The Supreme Lord said, O oh, Partha, behold my innumerable divine forms of many kinds, colors, and shapes. O oh, Bharata, behold the gods, Adityas, Vasus, Rudras, Ashvini, Kumaras, and Vayus. Behold many wondrous forms, hitherto unseen. O vigilant Arjuna, behold in one place, in this form of mine, the whole universe of moving and stationary beings, or anything else you desire to see. But you cannot see me with those eyes, with these eyes, so I give you divine vision. Behold my divine opulences. Sanjaya said, O King Dhritarashtra, speaking thus to Arjuna, the omnipotent Supreme Lord Shri Hari revealed his magnificent almighty form. The Lord revealed his effulgent, omnipresent, all wonderful universal form of many mouths and eyes, many marvels, effulgent dress and garlands anointed with celestial fragrances, many dazzling ornaments and gleaming upraised weapons, the brilliance of a thousand suns appearing simultaneously in the sky might resemble the effulgence of this great universal form of the Lord. All right. So in the previous chapter, right, the divine glories of the Lord, Krishna's speaking about some of his opulences, his majesty, and now our, some curiosity has been awakened in Arjuna, right? He wants to to have some some darshan of this great majestic form because Arjuna knows Krishna as his buddy, right? And <laughs> and and later on in, in this chapter, there's a very um touching section where Arjuna's, you know, suddenly apologizing to Krishna because he's making this contrast of this great majestic universal being and thinking, oh, you know, I sat with you on the same bed. We would talk and we would eat together. And really, this is who you are. Please forgive me. You know? So he's he's overcome, overwhelmed by this majesty of the Lord. And as we said, he, he comes to regret having... <laughs> Or, or rather, he we, perhaps more accurately, he he realizes he prefers, you know, that simple, you know, accessible friend, you know, he can who whom he can relate with in an intimate way. You know. So his curiosity has been awakened, and Krishna is immediately responding and giving him this divine vision so that he can perceive. And this verse, chapter 12, we sometimes hear that this was the verse that um, was chanted by Oppenheimer when they did the when they did the test of the first nuclear bomb, right? And the scientists who developed that. You know, sometimes I hear it was this verse, sometimes I hear it was another one. Um Yeah, the time I am. Yeah. That one, sometimes. Kolo, me, Kolo, yeah, Koloham or something. Right, exactly. Um, but sometimes we hear this one. 
um, this DV Surya Sahasrasya, the brilliance of a thousand suns appearing simultaneously in the sky. And he knew the verse by heart, Oppenheimer. You know, he chanted it, he recited the Sanskrit. <laughs> The brilliance of a thousand suns appearing simultaneously in the sky might resemble the effulgence of this great universal form of the Lord. And of course, all these, these you know, modern weapons and methods of warfare they're developing nowadays, you know, they you know it's not a new thing. You know, in in you know, the previous ages they had much more advanced technology. <laughs> so um Anyone else have any comments or should we continue? <clears throat> I just thought of something really quick in relation to that. Arjuna launched a bunch of nuclear weapons and he was never amazed at those like he is by this universal form. So there must be no comparison. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> yes. Um, I wanted to check. So as we're reading this, I I wanted to, I don't know, in my head it was, the question was, is this to say that we, is this like, uh, could you look at it as well to say, you know, familiarity or something to that effect? Because you were saying that, you know, when Arjuna said, uh, you know, I can't believe that, okay, this is the form I'm looking at. And yet I sat on the same bed and we did this and we did that. Mm -hmm. Does it does it have something to do with like uh, there's a saying about familiarity breeds something or the other? Familiarity breeds contempt. Right. Something like that. Right, right. Well, this is this is, I mean, you've actually brought out a really interesting point. <laughs> I have a lot to say on this subject matter. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean there, there there are different layers here i mean you know this this is actually something that's mentioned in chaitanya charitamrita that there's actually it's actually i mean you know we don't want to it's difficult to analyze that's why i didn't say anything because you know who are we to make analysis of these higher things but but let's put it like this the more intimate devotees, nothing will sway their feeling of familiarity with Krishna. They're not going to, you know, let's put it like this. The residents of Vrindavan, Mother Jashoda is not going to be impressed by the universal form. <laughs> let's put it like that. <laughs> yes, what you've said. That is a general principle. Familiarity breeds contempt. That if we're too familiar, then we, then we see someone in an ordinary way. But but that that does not apply here because this is all happening on the platform of pure devotion. And actually, you know, those who are more intimate to Krishna, they would be disappointed that Arjuna is apologizing like that. You know, like those who have a closer connection with Krishna, more intimate connection, nothing's going to going to change their mood of jnana shunya bhakti, knowledge-free devotion, right? They don't want to hear about the divinity of the Lord. And if someone tries to tell them, then they might consider it to be a vicious rumor. <laughs> Mother Jashoda makes comments like that of, some people, some envious people are saying that this boy is not really my son. He's some great God. You know, they want to take him away from me. You know, these are vicious rumors. You know, you know, she's not, this, these things don't impress her. She knows Krishna as her own boy, right? And nothing's going to change that. And their 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 mood of devotion for Krishna is not based on any type of awareness of his divinity, but it's way based on this natural, automatic, spontaneous love, attraction, devotion, surrender. So, so what can I say? You know, it, you know, we could say also like, you know, Arjuna also, he, you know, he also has um, to some extent that mood of jnana shunya bhakti, but it's, it, it's being swayed momentarily, right? The Aishvarya, Aishvarya means as, Oh, wow, Lynn has entered the waiting room. 
I haven't seen Lynn for a long, what is happening today? We've had quite a few persons who haven't joined in a long time. Lynn, so good to see you. I was thinking to write you actually, because we've missed you. It's been a long time. So good to have you with us. Dandavat. Um, so um, yeah, so Radhana Rupini, she's mentioned here, this form invokes awe and, and reverence. So this is so in a in a word, this is referred this nature of the Lord, this aspect of the world of the Lord is called Aishvarya. Aishvarya means the majesty, the opulence of the Lord. So Arjuna, in his normal position, he has this intimate, close relationship in Sakya Ras, the mood of friendship with Krishna. But he's momentarily overwhelmed by this Aishvarya aspect of the Lord. And so he's actually going to a a lower level of devotion, you know, a reverential mood, you know, he's being swayed by that, you know, but, you know, it is, it is a temporary thing. It is a temporary thing. And in Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's this comparison being made that, um, you know, other devo devotees, you know, like members of Vrindavan, you know, they will never be swayed by, by something like this. They're, they are much more fixed in their, mood of an intimate relationship with, with Krishna. We hear of that, um, we hear of that occasion, right, when Krishna has been accused of eating dirt. <laughs> There's some squabble going on between Krishna and Balaram. And, and so Mother Jishoda opens Krishna's mouth. Let me, and Krishna's denying, oh, mommy, I haven't eaten dirt. And, and Mother Jashoda is saying, let me see, let me see. And she opens his mouth. And, and, and when she looks into his mouth, she sees so many universal systems. She sees the cosmos. And, 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 and there's like a split second where she's like, hang on, what's going on? I've heard some people say some things about him. And then, and then we hear there's this little baby kitten nearby that meows suddenly and startles Krishna. And then Krishna comes in closer to his mother, like out of showing some fear, you know, looking for protection. And then she's, oh, he is my own boy. You know, and she's embracing him. You know. So we hear of instances like that where there's some glimpse of the Lord's divinity. But quickly that, that mood of jnana shunya bhakti, knowledge, free devotion, that is restored, you know. So it's, those are my, those are my comments on on that point. <laughs> and they're very beautiful and putting it into perspective. And also to understand there's is different layers, if I'm understanding correctly. But as you're saying, this is the highest where you speaking about Mother Yashoda and the Gorkis. But when reading this and Arjuna is um, explaining this is how he felt, and uh, oh, I'm not even explaining properly, but what I'm understanding. But like I've also heard um, what we're saying, like some of the devotees that came back from India, and you know, saying they didn't want to stay too long because you know about that familiarity. But like on, let's say the level I am, <laughs> when you're saying, you know, because it takes, I would think, to that is like the highest level. But if you know, before I even thought of, you know, Krishna consciousness and that, you also hear, oh, but, you know, people saying, oh, I am God and God's within me and that. So does there need to have, okay, there doesn't need to, but, you know, stage of four and reverence before you get there. I, I can also understand that you can just, I don't know, like automatically get there, but um, maybe what I'm asking is the, the placeholder where this comes in it's on that path or uh or is it yeah like the reason for arjuna saying this or is it to see that distinction oh uh, i mean um i mean you've raised some very good points yeah you're you know one thing that's important is we have to make a distinction between you know where we are and what's appropriate for us and and what's the position of the eternal servitors of the Lord and you know and, 
you know, that's an important thing. So in our case, yes, that is something that we have to be careful about. Familiarity breeds contempt. But, but you know, I saw that Jayadev was um, nodding quite a lot when you're seeking it. You look like you have something to say on this point. <laughs> oh, I, it sounded like, like you were saying are, there, are, there are stages to devotion and then Arjuna is one step below, which, right, Bharaka Krishna is not that whole realm has an element of Aishwarya in it because he's a king, he's a ruler. Mm -hmm. There's one degree of separation, right? Like Vrindavan's the most intimate and then Bharaka, which is what this is happening, Bharaka Krishna, this is one twice or, or not twice removed, but one step removed from that mm -hmm. level of intimacy. So there's a more of a tinge of Aishwarya with his palaces and his wives and all of that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Is that what you were kind of referring to as Seva Rupa? Like state, like this is a stage. Oh, so so what I was uh, kind of referring to is, you know, like we also have the stages in the different scriptures. Okay, so Bhagavad Gita is explaining to us this, uh, you know, part of it and um, stages in devotion. Uh, as Vishaka Didi was saying, you know, to get to that stage where, you know, on that highest level where Krishna is, you know, there's just spontaneity in your dealings with Lord Krishna. But, you know, if, like to, um, on my understanding or if I want to spread something that I know, uh, yeah, how can I put this? Um, I think just maybe understanding. Um, Marie, you're being asked, um, your voice is kind of coming in and out. Yeah. If you speak straight into your microphone, I think that will help. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry for me. <laughs> Sorry, Marie. You're yes. being told um, your thoughts. <laughs> yes. And uh, maybe I, I don't know how to articulate myself properly, but. Um, yeah, I no, I didn't. What you're saying actually the your answer is um the answer to your question is very simple. Yes. There's that's the verse of Saraswati Thakur. Pujala Raga Pata Gaurava Bange Matala Haritana Kirtana Range. Do you know that verse? I know. This I've verse heard it. you've heard it. Yes. All right, nice. Do you know the meaning? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, maybe if you said it would jog my memory, but Pujalaragapata Gaurava Bange Matala Harijana Kirtana Range. Saying that we are doing puja to the Ragapat, the plane of spontaneous devotion. While while uh -huh. we while we are Pujala Ragapata Gaurava Bange, we are maintaining a posture of reverence ourselves. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This Godava Bang is referring to a reverential mood, and Bange here means a posture. So we are worshiping that plane of intimacy and intimate dealings with the Lord, automatic, spontaneous. But but we ourselves are keeping we're aware of our position. We're keeping ourselves in a lower plane, and we're worshiping that. We're following a more regulated life, practicing life. You know, and and approaching that the Lord in a mood of reverence. We're not imitating. Mm. Right? So we, yes, for us, it is helpful that we have a mood of reverence, that we cultivate that mood of respect, and that is helpful for us. But our, but that's not our the final ideal. We recognize the ideal is something higher. The ideal, but we are not there. We're worshiping those who have that, and that is where our gurus want to take us. Right. And now we're following we're following some degree of vidimarg, you know, rules, regulations, sada, we're sadakas, we're following a regulated practicing life. And Matala Hadijana Kirtanadanga, we're also giving a lot of emphasis to kirtan. You know? So I, I I think um I mean I think you brought up a really important point and and I think this and this verse answers your your question absolutely that's perfectly said so it's following the saints and the Mahajans but knowing where your position is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our our Guru Dave he gave this very nice explanation one time you know because there's there's this there's this confusion sometimes like are we following Vidimarg or are we following Ragamarg? You know, there's some uh, 
confusion like that. And our Gurudev harmonized it very wonderfully one time, saying that we are following Ragamarg hidden inside of Vidimarg. Put it like that. We're following Ragamarg hidden inside of Vidimarg. And 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 then some and then because sometimes people also say we start out with Vidimarg and then we're gonna go to Ragamarg. But Guru said, no, actually we're following Ragamarg from the beginning. No, but hidden inside of Vidimarg. And 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 he and he and he said what Ragamarg really means is is hankering that we're serving with some consciousness and earnestness and desire to serve. We're not just in a blind mechanical way following the rules, but we are in a living way with some desire to please our divine guardians we are following. And our Gurudev gave a very wonderful example of this, and which I find so helpful. Um, he said, it is like, imagine you're at the train station and you need to get to your, you have some service, you have to get to your destination by a particular time. And, and you know, it's different in every country, but in India, you can actually get on the train without purchasing a ticket. And then, and then there may or may not be a ticket inspector. No. You know, in some countries, you can't get on without, like, showing your, like, having your ticket go through a machine. Right? But in India, it's like that. So Gurudev said, like, you, you've come, you arrived late to the train station. Your train's leaving in a few moments. So you have two options. You either just jump on the train without a ticket and take the risk of getting in trouble. And also, you know, you're, you're, you're being dishonest in a sense, right? Or you, you just say, okay, I'm not going to be able to take that train. I'm going to be late. I won't be able to do that service. I'm going to line up and buy a ticket for the next train. You know, the, these are the two options. So Gurudev said the mood of the, of the Ragamarg devotee is that they want to follow the rules. It's not that they don't. There's sometimes this misconception of Ragamarg devotees. They're just, they think they're completely above everything and they can do whatever they want. No, no, a real Ragamarg Bhakta, of, of course, on a very elevated platform, then another inspiration may come. But particularly for the for the practitioner, you know, their their feeling will be, I want to buy a ticket, I want to follow the rules. But right now there's some service necessity. I have to get on this train. So I'm just going to have to break the rules right now, although it's not my desire. And I may have to face consequences for that. And I'm ready to face that. You know, so he said, this, this, I found this a very, one very helpful example, you know, that we are, we're always trying to keep ourselves in a lower position. We will think I'm not qualified to break the rules. You know, that's for the higher devotees. But when, if it's necessary if, if we're seeing what is the real service need here, then if it's really necessary, then I will do it. You know, because what's most important is fulfilling the service need, not following the rule, right? So I find that very, very helpful as well. Actually, the mood is that the devotees always want to follow the rules, but Krishna, he likes to, Krishna's a trickster. <laughs> he likes to create trouble <laughs> and he and he'll give them there will be a point when he gives them that inspiration like pulling their heart to transcend to go beyond it's irresistible it won't be that and this is the this is the mistake that unfortunately many in the Gaudiya Sampradaya nowadays make we won't mention any names but there are a number of missions like that they they think, oh, we need to arbitrarily make a decision. Now I need to upgrade my spiritual life. You know, so now I'm going to start studying this, this higher topic and practicing how to be a Manjari in Vrindavan or whatever, you know, because that's the stage. I'm. It, well, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be that it's going to be an irresistible pull of your heart. You know, it's like, like, I really like some comment, um, when one devotee made to me recently, like there are certain questions, if you have to ask them, the answer is no. <laughs> it's just a blank. The fact that you need to ask, it's already no. The answer is already no. 
<laughs> it's like like it's not that we're gonna we're gonna dis we're gonna decide oh i need to practice um you know i need to practice i i need to realize my um my siddha deha form my eternal form and i'm gonna practice that now no it's going to be something irresistible or your or the qualified guru will tell you it's not that you're going to arbitrarily decide that yeah so um where, where was i going oh yeah so but then but so then krishna you know, he'll pull on your heart you know he will pull he'll give you that inspiration and there's this beautiful verse. Our Gurudev was chanting this verse when he was leaving this at the time before he left this world. He was repeatedly chanting this verse of Madhavendra Puri. And it's an apology. The Sandhya, Vandana Bhajam, Astu Bhavato, where Madhavendra Puri is apologizing because he can't follow like all the different Vedic injunctions anymore. Like there's this deep mood of humility in him. Please forgive me. Oh, my morning, noon, and evening prayers, my, you know, my ritual bathing and, and, you know, this mantra and this practice and this worship. There's so many things in the Vedic culture. Please forgive me. I cannot follow you anymore. But I feel that everything that I need can be attained by simply remembering the lotus feet of my beloved Lord, you know, Sri Krishna. And he's apologizing in that. There's no mood of arrogance there. And, and another comment of Gurudev's, I wanted to mention um, this comment, how he was making this point, how the devotees they always want to follow the rules and Krishna wants to break the rules. And, and, he, and he mentioned one time this very funny example of um, this devotee, um, Madhava. He's a, he's a devotee of Lord Jagannath. We've got all kinds of devotees tuning in today. We have um, Govinda's just tuned in, and um, we have the Jayashri joined, Prema Sindhu Prabhu. So good to see all of you. Amazing. Amazing. I don't know, Ooh. something's in the stars. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so Gurudev, he told this story, um, Madhava, he's a devotee of Lord Jagannath, and and um and Lord Jagannath told him, like in a dream or something, that he wanted this particular jackfruit. <laughs> From a tree, you remember I told this story. As so I want this jackfruit, I want you to pick it for me. But it was in someone else's backyard. So, so but Madhav is a faithful devotee. Oh, Jagannath asked me to steal this jackfruit for him. So I'm going to do it. So he, so then he goes and climbs that tree. He gets the jackfruit. As, he, as he's coming down, and the the owners they come out and find him and. They beat him. And he's telling him, no, Jagannath told me. Jagannath told me. <laughs> like, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but then but then later on, they have, um, they're given some dream. Lord Jagannath comes to them and they realize their mistake. He actually was a devotee, you know. But but sometimes Krishna will play with his devotees in this way. You know, that he's he's pulling them to to break the rules. But the devotees, that's not their inclination. You know, they like to play by the rules. They have that feeling of humility, right? I'm not qualified to break the rules. So we will, Srila Sridhar Maharaj makes this point in, on place. If we will always try to adhere to the lower duty, promotion will come of its own accord. It's not something to push for. But we always think of ourselves as being in a lower position. We try to go to the lowest duty. And, and then and promotion will inevitably come when we are qualified. You know, we will be taken. And we will become more qualified by that tendency of, of going to the lower position, trying to do the lower services. You know, that is the real feeling in the heart of a real devotee. They always feel like that, you know. Tadasa dasa dasa nam tadasatvam dehi me prabho. This is Raghunath Das Goswami's prayer. You know, may I have the position of the servant of the servant of your servant, servant. Majjanmana phalam mida madu kaitabare mad parthaniya mad anugraha esha eva tad brittya brittya paricharaka brittya brittya brittyasya brittyam itimam smara loka na this beautiful prayer of, I believe Jamuna Charya 
This word brittya means servants. But brittya, brittya, paricharaka, servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of your servant, servant, servant. <laughs> That brittya, brittya, paricharaka, brittya, brittya, brittyasya, brittyam, iti mam, smaram. How many times written there? So he says, this will be the majjanmana falam. This will be the fulfillment of my birth. This will be your grace upon me. Majjanmana falam, ita madam, tvat partin. This is my prayer to you. This will be your grace upon me. This will be the fulfillment of my birth. If you will consider me, Lord, to be the servant of the servant of the servant, 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 servant. So this is the, this is the feeling of the authentic, someone who's authentically approaching the truth. And we will try to follow that. And yes, it's. I mean, I'm really glad you brought this point up because it can be confusing, right? And this is where when you hear about the moods of the intimate devotees of Vrindavan, right? And this is where Sahajiism comes in, imitationism comes in. So it's very dangerous. That's why we don't just jump and read Krishna Leela and that's it. No, we're hearing the words of our gurus, right? We're hearing Krishna Leela through the lens of the heart feeling of our gurus. And that's a safe and realistic approach. Otherwise, we will if we go in and imitate, you know, Mother Jashoda and the gopis. It's like we're signing our death warrant, you know, as far as progress in Krishna consciousness is concerned. You know, like, so that's why going through the lens of our gurus' realization and their feeling, that is so essential. Understanding where is our position. So, so again, puja ragapata godava bange. It all comes back to that, right? We worship that higher plane. We're maintaining our position in this soil. You know, we're on the grounds. <laughs> not not going to float into the clouds right now. Let's keep it on the grounds. You know, where we are. Uh, you have a you have a question. Uh, look it up, and I think it's Jamuna Charya. And look, it's in Prapanajiva Namrita. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, and you know, this expression of Saraswati Thakur, Gurudev Shila Maharaj, they've emphasized it so much, you know. This Pujala Raghapata Godava Bange. There was one time in, um, in, um, Adibol. <laughs> A new friend here joining with Chintamani. Oh, she can't hear, but this is my 103-year-old grandmother. Hey. I, I'm introducing you to my friends so they can see oh, your beautiful God. face. Oh, my, I have to yell and talk to her. My granddaughter is beautiful. She is. <laughs> well, We're uh, reading Bhagavad Gita. Do you know Bhagavad Gita? Hi. Do you know Bhagavad Gita? Do you remember when we were in India? Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> this is what they study in India. Maybe I'll make it again there someday. I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Happy to have you with us. <laughs> and also, um, Mukunda's just joined us as well. Wow, everyone's showing up today. But there was one talk our Guru Dave gave in... Um, in Russia, where he was saying this verse, like this verse is, this verse is our, is our practicing life. It represents our practicing life, our bhajan. It represents our ideal. You know, it is, it is everything. It is, it is so important. Shula Maharaj described this verse as representing the whole tenor of Saraswati Thakur's preaching. It is above, it is above, and we are here. We are here. So, yes, you know, we can hear these nice, sweet stories of Vrindavan, but we have to stay stay on the ontological side. You know, don't get too lost in the Leela. Understand the ontology. What is our position? What is the gradation? You know. And you know, in Shila Shudamarj Dandavat Mukunda Prabhu. And Shila Shudamarj, she made this point, you know, you know, on the on the way to Vrindavan, there's Vaikunta. Right. In other words, right, what is Vaikunta? Vaikunta represents <clears throat> the plane of awe and reverence. And above that is 
is Vrindavan, the plane of intimacy, right? So Vaikuntha is on the way. Let's let's remember that, you know, we don't need to jump to that higher plane in some type of imaginary way. So we're so grateful to you, Seva Rupa, for bringing up these important topics. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nandavat. <laughs> Nandavat. Does anyone else want to add anything? Uh, what about Marie? You look like you had something to say. Well, just Jaya Dave and I were talking about some of the stuff this morning. So uh -huh. I was just like replaying bits of our conversation, but now I have like completely lost the plot. So <laughs> I don't even remember what I wanted to say. Um, I'll tell you someday when I do. <laughs> well, that that's cool. You're speechless. <laughs> Marie's speechless. Wow. <laughs> doesn't happen often. Yeah, it doesn't it's happen like, often. I know. That's why it's this so and like this. 22nd verse of the Prima Dama Davis Stotram, I think that's about, about what it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma has a contribution. Grandma, can you share about um, what you just told me about how we're all meeting international? I, I went around, I showed this person's from here, this person's well, from I there. It's so this impressive, amazing, truly is, especially for someone who my age, <laughs> because uh, I was around when Alexander Graham Bell found out that a voice can go through a wire. <laughs> and wire is under the ocean still, I think. <laughs> so it's incredible that you're so far away. And I can Incredible, incredible. <laughs> Grandma, do you remember when telephones came out? Were there phones when you were? Well, well uh, not everyone had a phone. I do remember when phones came out. They were about the size of a, a, a pillow, you know, that's where you read. And it'd be on the wall. And uh, we were fortunate to be one of the few to have that wooden box on our wall. We lift up the receiver and someone would say, can I help you? <laughs> and that was, that was great. We also had rings like uh, ours was a, long, a long and a short, you see, or two shorts. Uh, we shared phones with the others on that. So whenever we'd hear the phone ring for a long and a short, we would answer. <laughs> but uh, that, that was long ago. That was long ago, yes. Mm -hmm. And look what we have now. Incredible. And what, what is your grandmother, what is your name? What's your name? <laughs> My name. <laughs> well, I'm Geraldine Katie Olafson. Geraldine you Rask. Katie Olaflin. So I use my middle name. Geraldine Francis Katie Olaflin. Yeah, we'll do it. Hey, classy. Kind of. We, you we have to talk use, louder. We use middle names a bit. Shannon, what's your middle name? You don't know my middle name, Grandma? I, I gotta know your middle name. Shannon Lynn Olaflin. Oh, Shannon Lynn L Y N N. That's yep. right. Shannon Lynn Olaflin, right. So that, that's true. Geraldine Francis, Katie, which is English, and Olafla. And I married a man that was totally Irish, which is totally great. <laughs> well, it's an honor to have you with us. And we have 10 children. We want to thank you for your granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> she's saying thank you for coming oh. and grandma was saying that she has 10 children and i'm grandchild number 10 <laughs> oh it's true, it's true. We, shannon is number 10 and i have 10 grandchildren <laughs> you have 10 regular children and 22 grandchildren and right. how many great grandchildren 15 15 great grandkids wow <laughs> Children, oh, so, hard to so I'll oh, yeah. know. Mom, say hi. 
Hey, hey, Bashaka, you're it's your a magic friend. Christmas list. My goodness. Hi. Neva, Neva. Oh, hello. Hello, Neva. Ah, I gave up on that a long time ago. It's just Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, really? If you're a godchild, you get something. Uh -huh. <laughs> Otherwise, it's impossible. You yeah, have to be married. Like 100 Christmas presents and birthday presents and all the other things. And yeah, it's we good. don't do that. We just have Merry Christmas. We're good. Happy birthday. Have a cake. You know? She starts doing pranam. My mom does pranams now. You, you, you see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh. So we have yeah, it's good to see you. Generations here. Yeah. Whole bunch. Yeah. Wow, this is an epic moment. Yeah, it's been taking very good of her grandmother. Don't talk over the shotgun, mom. Sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be quiet. <laughs> I'm supposed to be quiet. You know I have a trouble with that, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I learned from a really wonderful, powerful woman. I love you, mom. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Chintamani's mom talks a lot. Gee, I would never have predicted that. No. <laughs> I'm sure. Can we We're have a shot? Can we have a shot with the three of you together? The three of oh, us? Oh, wait, we got to go over to grandma then. All right. Okay. Generations. Well, it's not her mother. It's She will tell you that, you know, my dad's mom. It's my mother-in-law. <laughs> my mother-in-law. No blood between us. <laughs> my dear daughter-in-law. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> my my, okay, grandma, these are devotees in Hungary. She's waving. This is Kanu Priya. Is that the Priya and Ananda Krishna. He's like, I didn't have a little brother, but if God gave me a little brother, I would want him to be just like Ananda Krishna. Kind of. Are you my? Are we, is he my little brother or not? I don't know. I hope so. Incredible, incredible, incredible. In all different hours. Yes, all times of the day different. Oh. See, it's dark there. Look behind them. It's dark and hungry. And it's, it's going to rain here in South Charleston or South Carolina. Yeah. It's good to see all of you. Right. Take care. You don't have to go get your car. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Oh, thank you for that moment. That was really special. <laughs> well, it's been a beautiful meeting as always. And it's so cool. So many of you tuned in today. Um, this is going to be our last meeting for a little while. Um, we have a Japan excursion coming up, Chintamani, Davies joining. Um, so we'll be resuming our meetings middle of May, I think Thursday, the 11th of May. And we ask for all of your blessings. You know, we, we can't get anywhere in life without the blessings of the Vaishnavas. So we'll be grateful for all of your well wishes for this new humble service attempt. <laughs> Jai. Travel well. Oh, Marie is saying that there's going to be a Govinda Mela meeting happening now. 